What's going on everybody? Welcome or welcome back to my channel, Let's Talk Tottenham. And today we're going to look at a couple of podcasts that have come out in the last few days and talk about Spurs. Alright everyone, before we get into anything you know as a Tottenham fan, au dare est facer, but around these parts on the YouTube platform, it's au dare est amare, to dare is to like my friends. So please, like this video, subscribe to my channel, uh, comment, let me know what's going on. I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions. It helps me uh, create better content for you. And yeah, I want to talk about Tottenham, have a conversation, have a dialogue. So uh, get in there. So today I wanted to look at two podcasts in particular the extra inch had a bonus episode back on may 13th and then also talk about hotspur america and one of their recent podcasts and so we're just going to dive right into it and first talk about this bonus episode it was very insightful in fact it was actually sobering i felt like when i first heard that tottenham was coming back i was excited i was so looking forward to it but listening to this had a sobering effect. I realized that there's a lot going on, and especially when it comes to what's going on in England, what's going on in London, I have no clue. And so, although I'm excited where I'm at, um, I, I understand that it, it might not be that exciting where they're at. And so I wanna be conscious of that. And one of the things that they mentioned was having a family member have a scare of the virus or actually contract the virus. I know in my family, we had my dad's cousin got COVID and it was really scary. He's a respiratory therapist. His wife got it as well. And he talked about just being totally out of energy, uh, having trouble breathing, even having trouble uh, just desiring to drink water and get fluids in his system. So it is concerning when you have something like that happen so close to home, you really want everyone to take responsibility to keep themselves and others safe. So I understand that and I appreciated everything they said. So take a listen. There's also a blog if you wanted to read that. Uh, you can read through it as well on windycoys.com and I'll put a link in the description below if you want to check that out too. So those were super helpful. And then I also wanted to talk about the Hotspur America podcast. And I thought Man, these guys are super entertaining. They talk about a bunch of different topics, and one of the topics is regarding fake sound being pumped into the games. They've been doing this in the Bundesliga, and I can understand why, because I, I watched, I think it was the first weekend when they started playing games again, and it, it felt like I was watching tennis, the way that you would hear the sound of the ball being kicked and the players yelling at each other and the referees blowing the whistle or whatnot. It was not normal. It was so weird to have nobody, no fans in the stands. And I know different teams in the Bundesliga, like they talked about, some of them have had uh, pictures in the stands and they talked about maybe Levy trying to put some ads in the stands, get some revenue coming in. That would be awesome. I don't know what they're gonna do, but personally, I kind of like having no sound. I kind of like being able to hear the players yelling at each other and to each other. And that was unique. I know it's different. I know it's not the same probably reminds us of the reality of COVID and and that could be unsettling or uncomfortable. But I would like to hear from you. What are your thoughts? Do you think it's worth it to put fake sound in the games? I know one of them suggested it being kind of like uh, plastic surgery, maybe. And uh, it might be fake, but it's better than nothing. So yeah, love to hear from you. Do you think that's worth it, not worth it? And uh, yeah, I'd like to know your thoughts. The other thing they talked about, well, they didn't talk about this, this just happened, was one of them had a Charlie horse in the middle of the episode, and it was so funny. I was listening on Spotify, and all of a sudden you just hear him yelling. What's going on? What's going on? <laughs> oh, I told you it wouldn't happen. Ash, ash, ash. You need Sorry. to go eat a banana, bro. Dude, you have no idea how much magnesium I put in my body. Oh, I've done 150 miles in the last two days, and it's not like that's a whole lot, but it was really hard. And now, oh, oh, sorry about that. I you told you. Like it was you, have, 
Sam just shot yeah. out of his chair, everybody, and uh, oh, I didn't jumped do it. That's going to show up a video. That's going to show up a video too. <laughs> oh my god, that's awful. It's the absolute worst. But hang on a second. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go back to Aurier. Goes from the agony of a Charlie horse into the agony of talking about Serge Aurier like nothing ever happened. I mean, he he transitions that like Christian Eriksen at the peak of his Tottenham career just felt like butter. And that was really funny to watch and listen to. But I would highly recommend you listen to the whole episode. Check them out. They're on YouTube now. They are looking for some subscribers. So subscribe to them as you subscribe to me. And also check out their, their podcast. It's really interesting to listen to. One of the other things that they talked about was what is the strength of Spurs now that they're coming back? Is it the health of all the players coming back? Is it the full bench and the ability to use five subs? Is it Mourinho? Is it not Mourinho? And I think in particular it's the combination of those with the ability to have five subs in a game. Mourinho does tactical substitutions often and he'll do them early if needed and I think his ability to do that is a strength. It's something that will have because we have Mourinho that will allow us to hopefully do better and and I would love to see as many wins as possible in these last nine games so let me know what your thoughts are what's the greatest strength of Tottenham now as they're coming back headed into this last stretch what are, what do you think is the greatest strength for Spurs but I wanted to end with one of the questions that was asked to the Hotspur America pod and it was somewhat maybe asked tongue-in-cheek and somewhat avoided as well but I just wanted to address it personally the question was, does humanity even deserve the beautiful game right now? If you took humanity out of that and says, does America deserve the beautiful game right now? My heart says no. We could learn from the beautiful game right now. What does it mean to be united? What does it mean to be a team? What does it mean to win as a team? Humanity being the team. What does it mean for us to win as a team and to lose as a team? What does it mean to stand up for what's right and stand against for what's wrong? I think with the events that have been happening recently, no, we don't deserve it. And I, I feel sad saying that, but I think that's the reality. Saying no to racism, obviously it's been in, in soccer for, for many years. And yeah, we've got a long way to go as a nation before we deserve the beautiful game, but hopefully uh, we can learn something from it. So those are my thoughts. I would love to hear your thoughts. Put them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and as ever, it was great talking with you.